Oh, there's a bite. You got it? I think he's got it. Yep. Yep. Thank Lordy for boat covers, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you're here, glad you subscribed. First things first, if y'all haven't subscribed to the Lake Life family channel, go over there and do so. It's gonna be right here where you can click it or down below in the description box. Need to get that channel to 100,000 subs because right now they're not allowing us to uh, have comments on the channel, which is a super bummer to many of you that have subscribed over there. And in order to even talk to them, to get on their level where you can actually communicate with them, you gotta have 100,000 subs. So go over there, do it, do me a favor. Even if you don't watch the videos, just go subscribe so uh, I can give them a piece of my mind over there. It is mid-morning right now and I cannot believe the shade, the amount of shade that is happening here at the treehouse. Spiders coming out everywhere and walking outside. You know, it's that time of year where you're like, oh, ah, like every time you walk out, there's little caterpillars coming down. Green, I don't even know where this stuff came from, y'all. I don't know why it is just, it's all over the yard. It just feels like one of those days I need to go spend my time out on the water. Grab a deer sausage stick, stick it in the boat, a little bit of water, some ice, and grab some poles, man. I've really been waiting on the lakes close to me to turn on and I've, I've traveled to other lakes and other regions and uh, I've had some success doing that, but now I wanna put my time in close to here so I can go out, fish, come home to family. Without further ado, let's get out to the water, see the conditions and get to dangling. Let's figure these fish out, clock in, put our work in today. Seven degree water that might be cooling down as we're idling around but what would y'all be doing if it was 66 degrees let me know in the comments your thoughts my thoughts are I'm gonna check back of Creek first it was a little cool last night but not cool enough to really back them out and I'm just gonna work my way out the last time I was out here water was 62 it was like borderline was like borderline they were moving up and there was a few fish. Sneeze. There's kind of some fish shallow. But not really, not full spectrum. Let's go see if they're up there and then let's figure out the deal. I always love doing this. I always love coming to a lake as it's evolving and figuring out the deal. What is the deal? How can I catch a decent sack of bass? Alrighty, I've been out here about two minutes and I just noticed uh, I just saw a bass blast something on the shore and uh, I'm thinking it could be a bluegill oh, there he is got him on the bank up there close slurped it close to the bank it's a good fish too hey gone hey gone Absolutely slurped it. Oh yeah, I like that. I like to start off the first few minutes of the day like that. That's a skinny fish. Skinny fish, that makes me think that fish has been up there for a minute. I don't see a bloody tail, but okay, good little first fish. Nice little two pounder. See you, baby. I'd been throwing a little bit off the bank and then I threw right up on the bank, gave it a couple of cranks and then I backed off of it. Crankbait floated up and just boop, hosed it. Crankbait can be worked in such a way that can crush bass around brush. You just have to be really good at it and I'm not. Like I know how to make a little roll cast and pitch uh, but there are anglers out there that can take a crankbait and flip it into brush uh, super soft landings. I kind of got a soft landing right there. That was like an eight. Uh, and they, they could work it through that brush, get those little pitches in, sort of like pitching a jig around, which is what I love to do. But the crankbait at times can be even better. It just puts off a bigger, bigger presence and... <sighs> 
still thinking about tying on a little bluegill crank and trying to get better at that technique. All I'm seeing in the back is just some stinky old gar. So that makes me think that it ain't happening. I'm not seeing any bass cruisers. Water's just pretty muddy and just not getting any bites too. That's always a good indicator. So the back of the creek, no luck. Is that gonna be the last back of the creek I fish today? Probably not. I've got more to explore. But all I have to go on right now is that crankbait up shallow. There also is the shad spawn this time of year too, and that could have been happening. I was seeing some shad flicking up in the shallows. They could have been really going this morning. They always spawn at night, and usually around the moons as well, but we're not really on a strong moon. Feeling more of a big bass out towards like Mid Creek, or even Main Lake, it's such a calm day. It's such a great day if you find them to really slow down, throw a, throw a shaky head, throw a, throw a jig, you know, but that brush, ooh, I might have to play that brush. I don't know, there's just options. There's options, this is good stuff, man, good stuff. I'm feeling good about it, already caught a fish, first five minutes of the day. Second fish comes on the swim bait. About the same size, just choked it right off the bank. New spot, new location. water's just so calm so still I was like yeah I'm gonna pick up my little swimmer this isn't a lake that I've uh, typically thrown swim bait like this on I know it's good in all lakes but this just uh, water's not very clear at all there's not any grass but that one absolutely choked it so that's a good sign oh god another one right there that one kind of felt like a guard hit. It's another thing that swim bait's good for, is just identifying you know, where a fish is. Oh, little guy. There you go. What are you doing hitting that swim bait, dude? We've got ourselves a few fish now. And it's great to know that finally, water 65 degrees, fish are on the bank. Like I'm just, you know when you're just catching them around the bank, they've moved up. So now the key is dialing in where specifically in these creeks are they? I haven't even tried Main Lake. They could be all the way out there. And then also, how do we get the big fish? We've had some two pounders or so. Now how do we get three, four pounders? Get ourselves a nice juicy fish. I got myself a little milk run now. I'm gonna hit this cove, I'm gonna hit this cove, hit this bank, and I've got all my baits lined up. It's gonna be good. Let's hit it, baby. Trim it down, let her rip, tater chip. Just lost one right on the bank there with a crankbait. Right off that point. Mm, little guy on a stick bait. Right on the point. God, what a splash back in there. Oh, there's a bite. You got it? I think he's got it. Yep. Got it. Good. Fit. Oh my God, a big one. That was a big one. Daggum. Well, that's the kind of fish I'm looking for. I think my hook was a little too small on my shaky head for what was going on there. So I switched to a uh, slim shake worm. It's a little bit slimmer profile. Just got old watermelon red, man. That was at least a five pounder. Just packed it to it, packed it, and then uh, hung on to it which is usually what a bigger fish does. Doesn't really move too much. I set the hook, I was like, whoa, this is a little hefty here. I thought for sure I was gonna get another one in there. I did not. What I have done is broke me off a piece of Eddie Ray's deer summer sausage. This is why I love the deer hunt right here. So I can eat deer while I'm fishing in the spring. Let that cheese melt a little bit. Keep me going, keep me fueled. That was gonna be my big bass right there, but we're gonna go try some other spots, try to get a good one that we can give a nice 
big Mondo sniff on. And we break the silence with a fat spotted bass. Been a while since I've caught one of these guys. A little one though. Toothy tongue. That's how you can really tell. They got those striations, but old muddy water spotted bass isn't as pretty as those real dark, nice fatties from other lakes. The reason I stopped right here, I noticed some, some blue herons on the bank and there was a shad jumping and one of them literally flew over there and grabbed a shad uh, out of you know the fish or school of fish that was trying to get the shad. It was really cool to watch. Then I thought, hey, I might throw me a little crankbait on here. They were pretty good sized shad that were jumping out of the water. So I was thinking, might be a big bass. Jeepers. Ooh, fish had it. Mm. Oh, another little peanut. Golly. I still love you though. Yeah. Oh, golly. Mm. Little buggers are in here. Afternoon buck bass, go have yourself a good day. You smell so good. Your smell gives me happiness. Lots of bites. Just not the ones that I dream of. Not the ones that I lay up at night and think about, get up early for. I don't know, the shad spawn may have. Okay, I gotta get back to that. Point another buck. Another little buck. They're just eating this little stick bait up like they should be. Oh, that's a spotted bass. Spotted bass getting up there. Little trick for y'all on your stick baits. If you're fishing on a shaky head, just take that little top part, bite that off. You're good to go again. Got yourself another another round to fish. Especially when you got those little ones just pecking at it technique y'all is so killer when the conditions are tough it's like you know i just watched a guy go all through here with a crankbait spinnerbait hadn't caught anything and then you just slow down with a stick bait either on a texas rig or a little jig head like this another little guy oh, oh well he's average size he's not bad He absolutely just sat with it. You gotta really be careful using these baits because they'll just sit there and hold on to it forever. He had it chomped. That simple. Mm, I just switched to a new color too that's it's got a blue and green fleck in it. So I'm getting bites. I've had to resort to this finesse style of fishing, but I like to call this Texas finesse. So just to tell y'all a little bit more about the rig here, if y'all are having trouble getting bites and need to rig up one of these, uh, the, the rod I'm using, it's a seven foot medium action rod. So it's, it's not a, a super whippy rod. It's got a, doesn't have a whole lot of backbone, quite honestly. I mean, it's a spinning rod, so it's not, it's not a heavy hammer. But what I have on here is braided line I've got our 30 pound eight strand braided line it's really smooth I like to use really smooth round line when I'm fishing spinning setup you just get better distance it handles better on on spinning tackle and then I've got a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader and I'm just using our our 15 pound Dugan line fluoro and that those two diameters actually match up pretty good the 30 pound braid and the 15 pound fluoro and 15 may seem quite a bit for fishing a shaky head but 
I, I have broken off so many fish using 10, 12, you know, I'm not even gonna go with eight or anything like that. I'd never go down that path. But with this setup, with the braid and the fluorocarbon mixture, you're able to get a good hook set because there's no stretch in the braid. And then with the fluorocarbon, the fish can't see it and also acts as a little shock absorber. And also if you're fishing rocks, it's really good too because braid tends to cut up on rocks. Fluorocarbon's pretty strong. And that is, that is it, it's just a dragging technique. You just drag it in that zone, four to six foot. There's probably bass that are obviously buck bass moving up, they're, they're getting ready to bed. We got another full moon coming up here in uh, about a week, week and a half. So there's gonna be just a lot of small fish in this area, but to, to get a bigger one, just fish it out a little bit. And I've already had my shot at a big one today. Didn't quite stick them. They didn't, didn't quite have it in its mouth, but. If y'all want to see how I spool up this combo, I'll leave a link for my Instagram too, where there's a video uh, to how I spool spinning reels. I know that seems pretty simple, but it's given me a lot of trouble in the past with line twists. I know many people have the same disgruntlement against uh, using spinning reels, but, oh, oh, see, that one just freaking took off with it. Jeez. I mean, that fish should have let go. If that was a bigger fish, you probably would have let go. I had pressure on it and it just hung on to it. Look at this strong fish. My gosh. Strong fish. What have you had? What do you got on you? You got some sort of big cut. Big cut on your back, dude. I'm sorry. It might have been from a, a bird trying to stab you at some point. Sorry about that. I've had a rough little little life. Just a bunch of these small bucks, you know, 14 inches and stuff. But this setup right here, I literally went from not getting bites to getting a lot of bites. They're just not big by switching to, th to this setup right here. They just can't resist it. The only thing I would say about this rig is that it does require patience. Oh, is that a fish? There's no, there's really no technique here. You know, it's literally, you throw it out there and drag it in that depth. Uh, and there's something about these stick baits that they, they really like this time of year. It's just been proven to catch small and big fish. You gotta be patient, which I am not that patient. It, it pains me to fish this way. I like to get a moving bait and going around and trust me, I did it for many more hours after that little morning bite was over and didn't get a bite and uh, this just seems to be the way to get them now and that's kind of the deal in the spring going into uh late later late spring is there'll be that shad spawn and fish are just more active in the low light anyways you'll get them going and then they'll just shut down in the afternoon and usually the people that end up conquering that day uh, are you know people that just are really patient they know how to just soak a worm and then eventually they'll get that big bite. Ooh. God, I was gonna say this bank just looks like the right angle for one to be in. So many buck bass moving up right now. So many bucks coming in. Uh, and I could tell, I could tell they're just coming in because their tails aren't all beat up. But that one's a little pink. But when they get later in the spawn, they really, they get all beat up. And that one looks kind of fresh. So. Another thing I love about fishing this on braid with that leader, you get such a good hook set when you make that long cast, you start dragging it and then you get that boom. You know you're gonna get a good hook set with the braid because there's no stretch to it. And you also get that sensitivity. It's just, doop. you feel the bite really good. Okie dokie, friends. We're gonna shut it down right there because it is getting muy caliente. I still have to mow the grass, do daddy duties. But got on a good little stretch of, uh, of bites right there just by switching up the technique. I have a love-hate relationship with spraying. I love it because it's the opportunity at a Mondo bass. You guys know that. 
I've had um, a few double digits in my life, and they've I've always come in the spring when the bass are super fat. Whereas if I catch them in the summer, they're like eight or nine pounders. That's the exciting time. The the non-exciting thing about fishing this time of year is that bass, when they get in that spawn mode, they forget about eating. They, it's just not on their mind anymore. So they'll always feed in the morning and, and at, at night in low light conditions. Uh, but during the spawn, during midday, it can be really tough. They just kind of shut down because they're thinking about spawning, you know? And a lot of those buck bass were moving up today. Had the shot at one big one, it came off. I'm gonna leave another tip on my Instagram about modifying your hook on your shaky head, whatever it is, to throw these, uh, these stick baits. I think this is really a, an ultimate finesse tactic for when the bass are tough. Fishing uh, finesse rig stick baits like that. If you're going to fish in ponds though, or grassy lakes, I recommend throwing that on a little Texas rig, like throwing you a 3 16 ounce on there, something pretty light. If it's real grassy and the fish are shallow, like less than five feet, you may want to go down uh, to like an eighth ounce and really fish it slow. And using that shaky head on there, that's just lights out for fishing any kind of hard bottom. Rocky bottom makes that noise, gets their attention, and there's something about a fat old stick bait that they just love this time of year. For those of you that are unfamiliar with stick bait fishing, you need to get you some. I'll leave a link down below for Carl's Bait and Tackle, our online retailer that we work with, and that's where I get all my all my terminal tackle and, uh, and a lot of my other baits from. So I'll leave a link for there, and if you sign up for uh, Carl's Club, you get 30% off the whole daggum site. It's pretty good and you can pick up the new Guggen line. It is available there. That's what's spooled up on my rig right here. 30 on the main line as Braid and then 15 as the leader. It's good stuff, it's affordable, and I think you guys are going to love it. Okay, that is all I have for you today. My face feels like a tomato and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have the old coon eyes when I take these off, but Golly, that's just like a tattoo of honor this time of year. Hope you guys enjoyed watching today. Don't forget to subscribe right here to the channel and subscribe to the family channel. I'll leave it linked down below. And I love you guys. I hope to see you right back here on the next dangle.